Cell phone is 262-794-6070. If you need to get a hold of me as well, feel free to call or text. We're here to support you. And uh, welcome to Brookfield Central. Fine, can you hear me okay? All right. Hello, future Lancers and families. My name is Jessica Primo. I am one of the school counselors here at Brookfield Central. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure of presenting with Mrs. Devine about our academic and career planning. So here are the four counselors at Brookfield Central High School. Your son or daughter's counselor will follow them all four years. Um, school counselors work hard in regards to working with your son or daughter on their academic and career planning. We are here for social emotional support and college and career readiness. As you can see, Mrs. Devine, who's on the call with me, she works with students last names A through F. Myself, Mrs. Primo, I work with students last names G through LE. Mrs. Lemke works with students last names LI through RI. And Mr. Grow works with students last names RO through Z. So this is a video that we would encourage all families to go watch at a later time, like Mr. Gritzmacher talked about, that we really want students to feel like Brookfield Central is a place that they can belong. So we would encourage you to go watch this video on your own and get a sense of what it's like to be a BC Lancer. All right, so the goals for the presentation tonight is gonna to be covering the academic planning site, ninth grade courses, how to plan backwards, scheduling considerations, some schedule examples that we have for you, our academic planner and how to schedule yourself, freshman elective options. So uh, as we spoke about before, Mrs. Han touched on our academic planning site. This is found right on our Brookfield Central website. I would encourage you if you have questions, want to look at our course guide, or if you're unsure about future dates, please go and utilize this site as a resource as we've spent a lot of time uploading and putting all of these great presentations for you and it's all housed on this academic planning site. So next let's talk about credits, graduation and careers. Not that I would ever expect you to remember all of this, we will meet with your son and daughter throughout the course of the next four years to really make sure that they are truly on track for graduation, but I'd like to cover just the basics. So for English, students need four credits, which means that they need to take English all four years here. For math, they need three credits. Science is three credits. Social studies is three credits. However, if you take all of the um, required social studies courses, you'll automatically hit that three credits. Physical education. So all students have to take PE9, which they take their freshman year, and two more gym classes that are taken in opposite years. Health is a required course. That course is taken within the sophomore year. Fine practical art, one credit. So that's like a music class, a business class, one of our wonderful tech ed courses that we offer here. Financial literacy is a class called personal finance. So students take that course within their junior or senior year. Seven and a half electives totaling 24. Along with that 24 credits, we do require students to take the Wisconsin civics exam. They can take this at any point once they enter in BC and that is housed on our Canvas page. And I'll talk about world language in a minute here. All right, so for ninth grade, what do you need to take? Let me tell you, English, your option is gonna be English nine or honors English nine. Math, I'll cover next. Science is gonna be biology or honors biology. Social studies, you have to take world history. Physical education, you have to take that PE nine class. That is a one-term gym class that you'll take. And then a suggested course is think about world language. So when we were at Wisconsin Hills, we talked to the students about if they are in currently Spanish one. Our high school foreign language teachers have said that it, it is okay to continue into Spanish two as a freshman. However, if Spanish is really a struggle and maybe they're not grasping all of the concepts, 
they're more than welcome to retake Spanish one, or maybe even think about taking a different world language. We offer Mandarin Chinese, Latin, French, German, Spanish, and I think that everyone should take a world language. Um, colleges want to see at least two years of a foreign language before they get to college. Um, Madison, for instance, more of an elite school will want to see at least three to four years of a single foreign language. Uh, towards later in this presentation, we have a list of just freshman specific elective courses and you'll be amazed by all of the phenomenal and wonderful wonderful courses that we offer here at bc all right math i didn't talk about this yet so i want you to think about planning backwards when it comes to math for instance if you look at the screen here you can see if a student is in eighth grade and they're taking pre-algebra then they would be taking algebra one as a freshman they would continue into geometry as a sophomore, algebra two as a junior, and as a senior, they'd be taking trigonometry and statistics. If your son or daughter is taking geometry, or excuse me, algebra one in eighth grade, then they'd be coming in as a freshman taking regular geometry or honors geometry. Sophomore year, they'd be taking honors algebra two or regular, pre-calculus honors or regular pre-calculus as a junior, and senior year they'd be taking BC calculus. So I really want students to think about what's their end goal when it comes to math. At Wisconsin Hills today, I had a student who said, Mrs. Primo, I want to double up and I want to take algebra one and geometry um, as a freshman. And I cautioned that. I said, well, you want to be able to plan backwards. If you double up, if you look at the middle section of this PowerPoint right now, you can see if they doubled up and they did algebra one and geometry that would mean sophomore year they're taking algebra two and trigonometry junior year they're taking pre-calculus and senior year they're taking an ap math course and i said if you love math that's great that is just fine you are more than welcome to double up but i do want you to think about how does that impact you because some students don't realize that it can kind of um, pin them into an AP math course their senior year in order to get that four years of math in. So that's what we want you to think about in regards to planning backwards for math. Some things to consider in when you're scheduling yourself is, do I want to take a regular course or do I want to take an honors level course? And my question for you is, do you truly have an interest in that subject area? For instance, honors English. Do you like reading? Is your strong suit writing? Do you really want to go in depth into that subject area? Are you an independent learner? Are you someone who has missing assignments? Or are you someone who turns their work in on time? They ask good questions in class. Those are all things to consider when you're wanting to go from a regular to an honors course or what have you. Students, if we have flexibility in their schedule can start in an honors course. And if they are not, liking the honors level, they have five days to drop from an honors course to a regular course. Along with this conversation is acceleration. I specifically spoke about math. Let's talk about an area different like art. So if your son or daughter wants to accelerate because they really enjoy art, we have some great art courses here. For instance, like drawing. They could take drawing one and drawing two as a freshman or painting one and painting two and start to accelerate in that specific area. Or if they wanna take bi biology and maybe take one of our cool project lead the way courses that we have here, they could always double up. Um, do I need to take a study hall? So we get that question quite a bit. Yes, you can take a study hall. We advise all students today to sign up for a full course load, meaning eight full credits. And Mrs. Devine will talk more about that. So, we encourage students to sign up for a full schedule because students have three weeks to drop a course for a study hall. If they aren't enjoying a course, try it out for three weeks. And if it's not for them, they can always drop at that point for a study hall, no punishment within their grade. Possibly if you're an athlete or planning on going out for the musical, you may need a study hall because your nights are taken up. So just something to think about. Um, in regards to world language, I kind of already spoke about what the colleges would be expecting. They want to see that two years of a foreign language. And then, like Mr. Gritzmacher talked about balance. 
balance is so important. If they're planning on going out for sports teams, joining extracurricular uh, activities, just to be sure that they're not signing up for all AP or honor level courses that we truly do have that healthy balance because we have to remember they're still kids and they still should be doing kid like things and not homework till you know 11 o'clock at night. That balance is just so very important. All right, I'm gonna hand it over to Mrs. Devine and she's actually gonna walk through some live schedule examples for you. Mrs. Devine. All right, hello everyone. Um, I'm Mrs. Devine and like Ms. Primo said, I'm going to walk through some example schedules for you all so you can see what a couple different kinds of schedules might look like um, for your child. So the first schedule that I wanted to show you all is a schedule that details alternating classes as well as two honors classes. So you'll see during first block that this student has concert band and honors biology, both listed in block one. These classes are alternating day classes. So on day A, this student has an honors biology course. And then on the opposite day, day B, the student has concert band. So that's one block all year for the two alternating classes. The student also has honors geometry starting off their freshman year, so terms one and two. Um, so as Ms. Primo mentioned, honors classes are rigorous classes, and this, but this student also has a couple cool electives. So they have video production, wood design and production, as well as intro to business. Here's another alternating day schedule that alternates with a different class. So this student is in concert choir, um, and they're alternating concert choir with world history. So world history and honors biology are the only two classes that freshmen can alternate their music classes with. Um, so if they're in a music class and they want to alternate their music class with another class, they would need to pick honors biology or world history. This student also has two study halls and they have the study halls during term three and term four. Um, so students can choose what terms they would like their study halls. This student may be in a fall sport or um, a winter sport and a spring sport um, and they need that little bit of extra time during the day to make up their homework that they're not able to complete at night. This next schedule here is a, quite a rigorous schedule because this student has an AP class. So during second block, you'll see AP Human Geography. And then the student also has two honors classes during terms three and four. So the student has honors geometry and honors biology. So this student might be interested in the math and sciences um, for their honors class. Um, and they were willing to put forth the effort or very interested in the social studies AP class of human geography. Mrs. Primo talked about acceleration in math. So if students, um, for example, are wanting to double up because they're planning backwards and they're looking at where they want to be their senior year. And she also discussed acceleration in art. This schedule details acceleration in science. So you'll see at the very top of this schedule, this student is in AVID 9, which Ms. Han talked about at the beginning of the night tonight. Um, and they're alternating AVID 9 with an honors biology class. So that's an all year alternating day two classes during first block. And then in addition to honors biology, the student is also taking a project lead the way principles of biomedical science. So students, if you're very interested in science, um, the medical field even, and you're a real hands-on learner, please look into the project lead the way classes. Um, these are classes that students can get their hands in both mentally and physically. Um, a lot of hands-on projects. So the project lead the way principles of biomedical science and the honors biology shows an acceleration in science for this student. So remember students, and I wanna talk directly to you. You're choosing your classes for your freshman year. This is all about you. There's a lot more freedom at the high school level than you would have had at the middle school level. You have a plethora of core classes you can choose from, elective classes you can choose from. So I want you all to consider a couple things when you're picking your classes for your freshman year. I want you to think about what you're interested in. I want you to think about where your skills and abilities lie. And I also want you to think about what classes might challenge me too, um, to expand my learning a little bit. So as you're going through and choosing your classes and having those conversations with your parents and maybe even your teachers to get some recommendations, this is all up to you. So spend some good time choosing these classes 
And next, I'll walk you through how to choose these classes. So this presentation will be posted on our academic planning site, um, as we've mentioned throughout the, the evening tonight. On our academic planning site as well are these how to schedule videos that one of our counselors, Mr. Greg Grow, created, especially for you all, um, that will help to walk you through exactly how to schedule in our Infinite Campus Academic Planner, and then also um, what your schedule might look like. So please feel free to access those videos through the academic planning site. But tonight, I'm going to walk you through this as well. Um, so students, if you have your Chromebook with you, I'd encourage you to pull that out right now um, and walk through this with me so I can detail the steps for um, how to pick your classes. So we went through this with the students at Wisconsin Hills today. But just for a little refresher, I'll go through it with you guys again. So you'll access Infinite Campus. And from there, you'll access the tab that says Academic Plan on the left side of your screen. You'll then click Next, and you'll be brought to a screen that looks like this. So for the sake of simplicity and streamlining, we only want our ninth grade or our students who will be ninth grade students next year to focus on the grade nine column. There's grade nine, grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12, but we're only looking at the grade nine column um, for scheduling for their freshman year. So there's a couple numbers at the top. The numbers directly next to grade nine will tell you how full of a schedule you have. For a full schedule, you will have, it will say eight credits at the top of your screen. For every study hall that a student is wanting to take, you will minus half of a credit. So if a student is taking two study halls, instead of this number at the top of the screen here saying eight credits, it would say seven credits. Here, this red arrow is pointing to box, the box that you can click in, and all of the classes in a certain category will drop down. For example, this is English. So if this student is scheduling for English, they would click in the box, all the classes would drop down, and they would select English 9. You'll note here that there are two English 9s, and I'll go over this in detail in a couple slides, but the student will need to select both English 9s because there is an A and a B. And that tells me and that tells students that this class is a whole semester long. So there's two terms of this English 9 class. So they'll go ahead and select English 9, um, 1302A, and then English 9, 1302B, and that will put them in the whole class. You can also look up course information at the very top of your academic planner. So if you access the search the course catalog box and start typing in, let's say, for example, small engines, um, because a student is interested in that class, it will pull up a screen that looks like this after you click on the class. You'll see what kind of credit the class satisfies. So in this case, it's half a credit of a fine and practical arts credit. It is also for grades nine through 12. So freshmen can take this class. There are no prerequisites for this class. And that's something that you'll want to pay attention to as you go through and schedule. Some classes there will be prerequisites for and freshmen will not be eligible to take those. But in this case, freshmen certainly can take this because there are no prerequisites. There will also be a course description that accompanies the course. And that might help you decide if you want to register for the class or not. And then at the bottom of the screen, you can click add to grade nine and it will add right to your schedule. So some scheduling tips. This is a lot of information and it can seem difficult, but it's not difficult. It's just a little bit tedious. So I want to offer these tips for you to make it a little bit easier and more enjoyable to pick the classes. So my first tip for you all would be what I mentioned about English 9. So choosing one and two term classes. Like I mentioned, English 9 is a two-term class, and I know that because after the four-digit number, there is an A and then there is a B. And so when a class has an A, that means you should also look for the B section of the class because that will register you for the whole semester of the semester-long class. So you'll note right here, this person selected 1302A for English 9 and 1302B for English 9, and then they're set. On the other hand, there are classes that are also only one term, and this, these are half credit classes. These classes do not have an A or a B or any letter after them. 
Um, so for PE9, you'll notice it's just 2001, no letter. That tells me it's one term and half a credit. Tip number two, alternating classes. So like I showed you the schedules that have the alternating day classes in there, you want to make sure when you go into the um, academic planner on your infinite campus site that you're selecting the class that says ALT. So when you go in to select, let's say concert band, because you're doing concert band your freshman year, concert band, your only option is alternating. So you'll select both the A and the B and then alternating concert band student wanted to do honors biology, be sure if you are wanting to alternate that with your concert band in this situation, you choose the class that says ALT. That means it's alternating. If you choose honors biology and it doesn't say ALT, then it cannot alternate with your music class. Tip number three, filling your schedule. So like Mrs. Primo mentioned toward the beginning of this presentation, we encourage all students to register for a full eight credits. This means that if a student, you know, wants to drop a class within those first three weeks of a term and they want to drop it, we can drop it for a study hall. If a student already has a study hall during that term where they want to drop a class, we cannot drop their class for a study hall because they cannot have two study halls in a term. Students are only allowed one study hall per term. However, if you feel like you are maybe nervous about your classes and you feel like a study hall would be helpful, you are more than welcome to register for a study hall. My final tip, alternates and saving your choices. So at the very bottom of your academic planner, you will see a little gray box that says alternates, like it says right here. So we told the students at Wisconsin Hills today, or we encouraged them to choose at least two classes for alternates. So these alternates are very important, and we want you to put a lot of thought into choosing these alternates because these alternates are classes that will re that may replace elective classes that were unable to fit into your schedule. So let's say a class is full, or it's not offered during a block that you need it in your schedule. We will then go down to your alternates and choose from your alternates to replace it. Let's say you had requested architecture and architecture won't fit into your schedule. We will then go down to your alternates and let's say the student wants to, or has Woods 1 listed as an alternate. We'll take Woods 1 and if that fits into your schedule where we couldn't fit architecture, then that's the class you're getting. So like I said, please put some thought, please put a lot of thought into the alternates that you're choosing because they may find their way onto your schedule. And then finally, save your choices. So the academic planner is not like a Google Doc, so it does not save automatically. You need to manually go to the top of your screen and click save. So if you're working on your academic plan right now, please take a minute, go hit save. You'll probably see a screen that pops up that says you haven't chosen enough credits. That's okay. That's because you haven't chosen classes for your sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. That's no big deal. We're just focusing on freshman year. You'll click OK, and then your classes will be saved. Like Mrs. Primo mentioned as well, there are a plethora of electives for freshmen. You all have so many choices of classes that you can take in your schedule in addition to your core classes, and they're super cool. So this presentation, like I mentioned before, is housed on our academic planning site. You can access this presentation and then access the link at the bottom of this slide here to check out the common electives for freshmen that you could add to your schedule for next year. So when is all of this due? Your course selections in your Infinite Campus Academic Planner are due on February 22nd at 8 a.m. So that means any classes that you have in there on February 22nd at 8 a.m. will be sent off um, and put into your schedule or sent in as requests for you. Um, so you cannot change your course requests after February 22nd. So be sure to have those conversations with your parents, with your teachers, um, and you know, really think about the classes that will work best for you and have them in by February 22nd. If you have questions and you viewed this, you've looked at our academic planning site and you're like, oh, I'm so wondering about this thing. We can help you as counselors. So on February 16th and February 17th, we have time blocked off on our schedule to help you with any and all of your 
scheduling specific questions. So to schedule an appointment with us on those days, you will access our Calendly links, which are listed here on the screen, and you will choose a time that we have available on the February 16th or February 17th, um, and that meeting will populate on our Google Calendar, and it'll be on your calendar as well. So those meetings will be virtual. All right, as we're wrapping up here, I want to encourage you all you all to access this presentation through the academic planning site and visit all of the department videos that our wonderful departments at BC have created for you all. So these department videos detail all of the classes um, that fall under their department's umbrella. Our teachers and our staff have done a wonderful job creating these videos and I think that you will find them very, very useful and super helpful as you go through the scheduling process. Um, additionally, we have two other presentations. So we have a new to high school basics presentation that walks you through um, some things that you'll need to know to help you to be successful your freshman year in high school. Additionally, in a regular year when we're able to get together at BC for our eighth grade night, our clubs, activities, and athletics will have booths strewn about the school um, and you'll be able to go up and interact with the people in those clubs, activities, and athletics and get more information about those activities. This year, they've created um, a very helpful document where, that you can access and get lots of good information about those clubs, activities, and athletics. And like I believe everybody who has spoken on this presentation so far has stressed, it's so important to get involved um, at Brookfield Central. The majority of our students here are involved in at least one activity, um, and it's really, really excellent for them um, to get involved and to feel like they belong at our school through their involvement. So please explore all of those links that we have available for you. Thank you all for attending. Um, again, if you do have any additional questions at all, please utilize our Calendly links to make an appointment with us. Um, and we look forward to talking with you soon. Go Lancers. See you later.